Today we are going to talk about buffers. Buffers are solutions that resist the change of pH when small amounts of acids or bases are added to it. You will find buffers mostly in biological systems and a drastic change in pH usually is detrimental to the life of the living organism. Therefore, natural buffers do exist. Blood is a typical example or rather blood plasma. The first thing we're going to do is see how we can prepare a buffer today. There are certain general generalizations which we can uh, look at first. All buffers are usually mixtures of a weak acid and its conjugate base. To give you an example, a weak acid is acetic acid and its conjugate base would be the acetate ion. Therefore, we need to take a mixture of sodium acetate, which is a salt, contains the strong conjugate base, and the weak acid, acetic acid. If you are taking a weak acid and the strong conjugate base, the buffer is usually referred to as an acidic buffer because the pH will be less than 7. Now, if you want a buffered solution where the pH is greater than 7, then you need to prepare a basic buffer. For that, you would use a weak base and the salt of its conjugate acid. A typical example would be ammonium hydroxide. And the salt that contains a strong conjugate acid can be any ammonium salts like ammonium chloride. So that's a generalization. So depending upon what your needs are, you will prepare a buffer by using a weak acid and the salt of a strong conjugate base because strong conjugate bases and strong conjugate acids undergo hydrolysis. That's what helps in the buffering process. Here is an example for preparing an acidic buffer. Now the choice of the acid and the salt is primarily dependent on your needs. If you want a specific pH, for instance, if you want a pH of 4.7, a good choice for the acid would be acetic acid because the Ka value for acetic acid is 1.8 into 10 to the negative 5 and the pKa is around 4.7. Now if you use the henderson hasselbalch equation you'll find that the pH is equal to pKa into uh, plus concentration of the anion by the acid. So what typically happens is you choose an acid whose pKa value is closest to the value of pH you would need. We will see this later as we do some calculations. Now here is an example of how the buffers work. Let's say you have a buffer and if you add some hydroxide ions into it, which means you add a base, how does the process of buffering help in resisting the dramatic change in pH. Normally if you add an OH minus ions or base, the pH of the solution would go up. Now if you add hydroxide ions to a buffer, these are the chemical changes that do occur, therefore it prevents the rise in pH. Since we already stated, in an acidic buffer, you have a weak acid and the salt of a strong conjugate base. So when you add the hydroxide ions, it tends to react with the acid that is present in the buffer. So here, if you consider the buffer to be made, between, uh, made by mixing acetic acid and sodium acetate, when you are adding hydroxide ions, it will react with the acetic acid to form acetate ions and water. The hydroxide ions that you added reduces the hydrogen ion concentration 
which causes a shift in equilibrium to the right, forming more acetate ions. Every time you add one mole of hydroxide ions, it consumes one mole of the acetic acid and produces one mole of acetate ions. Therefore, the pH of the solution will not go up because it has been neutralized by the acid that is present in the buffer. That is how we resist the increase in pH of the solution. The next thing we are going to see is what would happen if you add an acid into a buffer. Typically the pH would drop if you add an acid into any solution. Now if you add an acid into a buffered solution, it would resist the drastic decrease in pH and this is how it takes place. When acid is added to the buffered solution, the H positive or the hydronium ion reacts with the acetate ion. The acetate ion is a strong conjugate base. So the acetate ion combines with the hydronium ion to form undissociated acetic acid and water. Undissociated acetic acid will not show acidic property. So what's happened is the H3O positive or H plus ions that is present in solution, since it combines with acetate ions, cannot alter the pH of the solution. And the acid that is formed is undissociated, therefore no acidic property. So small amounts of acid like is hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid would prevent the decrease in pH because of its interaction with the strong conjugate base, in this case the acetate ions. Buffer capacity. Now what we mean by that is you cannot continuously add acids or bases to a buffer solution and expect the pH not to change. Depending upon the concentration or the composition of the buffer, there is a limit to which the buffering action can actually uh, show its buffering property. When all of the acid or all of the acetate ions as in the previous case is consumed by the addition of either a base, hydroxide ions, or an acid, hydronium ions, then, there will then the solution will start to show a change, which implies that the buffer capacity or the buffering action has been lost after that point. So this limit to which a buffer can resist the change is referred to as buffer capacity, which means additional quantities of buffers have to be added to the reaction mixture or appropriate quantities should be started should be added at the beginning of the reaction. The next thing what we're going to do is we're trying to calculate the pH of a buffered solution. For that we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation and this is actually derived from the simple dissociation of a weak acid. The first line represents HA which is a weak acid dissociating to give you H positive and A minus. The dissociation constant of this acid, Ka, can be written as products by reactants, which is H positive into A minus divided by HA. Since we are planning to determine the pH of the solution, we are going to rearrange the equation so that H positive ions can be, the concentration of H positive ions can be calculated. So on rearranging, H positive is equal to Ka into HA by A minus. We take this equation and apply negative log so that the equation turns to be minus log H positive is equal to minus log Ka plus minus log HA by A minus. Negative log H positive is equal to pH. Negative log Ka is equal to pKa. And since we have written log H A by A minus in the previous slide, we 
reversed the concentrations and wrote it as anion by acid when the term becomes positive. So this equation is called the henderson hasselbeck equation, can be used to determine the pH of solutions. Now the next thing we're going to do is see how we can affect the change in pH of a buffered solution. The pH of a buffered solution depends on the pKa of the weak acid. The change that can be brought about to this is very minimal. Plus or minus one value can be added or taken away. So the ratios of the concentrations of the acid and the salt determines the exact value of the pH. Now if you prepare a solution where the concentration of the anion and the acid are the same, then the henderson hasselbeck equation changes like this. Log anion by acid is equals to log 1, which is 0. So pH is equals to pKa for a weak acid. So typically, the pH depends on the pKa of the acid that you have chosen. So if you have a particular value in mind for an experiment, you should choose an acid which will give you an appropriate value for its pKa. Then you can change the concentration of the anion and the acid so that you can tweak the value of the pH. This is what I said a moment ago by adjusting the concentrations of the anion and the acid in the henderson hasselbeck equation you can obtain appropriate values for pH. The maximum change that you can expect is plus or minus 1 for the pH for a particular buffered solution. Here is a problem on buffers. Now we have prepared a buffered solution by mixing 0.11 mole per liter of sodium acetate with 0.09 moles per liter of acetic acid and we want to determine the pH of the solution. What you are given is the Ka value for acetic acid, which is 1.8 into 10 to the negative 5. With this information, you can calculate the pH using the henderson hasselbeck equation, which is a direct substitution. The first thing to do would be to calculate the pKa of the acid. Since Ka is 1.8 into 10 to the power of negative 5, pK is equal to negative log. 1.8 into 10 to the negative 5, which is equal to 4.74. Concentration of the acid is 0.09 moles per liter. Concentration of the anion is 0.11 mole per liter. Therefore, pH is equal to 4.7 plus log concentration of the anion by concentration of the acid, which is 0.11 divided by 0.09 which turns out to be 4.83. So that's the value of pH for the solution whose concentrations are known. That's a pretty straightforward calculation. The problem can be modified where we can expect you to calculate either the concentration of the strong conjugate base or the acid Here we're going to make a small modification to the problem that we have done. So we know the pH of the solution and we are going to test the effectiveness of this buffer by adding a small quantity of an acid or a base. So today what we're going to do is we're going to add 0.01 moles of a strong base into the buffer solution that we prepared in the last example. And we wanted to, and we would like to see what is the change in pH that occurs or delta pH or shift in pH. This is the intent. Now you can make an ice table where HA is the concentration of the acid, OH is the concentration of the base that we are going to add, A- minus is the concentration of the acetate ions in the system. So you started with 0.09 moles of the acetic acid and at the same time 
we had 0.11 mole per liter of acetate ions. Now into the solution, we added sodium hydroxide or a base whose concentration is 0.01 moles or we added 0.01 moles of the base into the solution. When you add a base into the system, it reacts with the acid. So HA being the acid is going to react with the strong base. 100% of the strong base is going to react with the weak acid. Therefore, the number of moles of acid that is remaining is 0.09 minus 0 0.01 which is 0 0.08 so the new concentration for the acid is 0 0.08 moles now when this reaction takes place it also produces acetate ions and the number of moles of acetate ions that are produced is equal to the number of moles of acid that has reacted which is equal to 0 0.01 therefore the new concentration for the acetate ion is 0 0.11 plus 0 0.01 which is 0 0.12 moles. Now that we have the concentrations of the acid HA and A minus the acetate ions, we can determine the pH using Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Substituting the numbers, pKa we already determined, so 4.7 plus log concentration of the anion has increased by from 0.11 to 0.12 and the concentration of the acid decreased from 0 0.09 to 0 0.01 therefore the new pH would be 4.92 so there was a slight increase in pH and if you do a perfect calculation you will find that the small change delta pH is very small so if you go back, you know the pH for the previous solutions was 4.83 and this is 4.92. So shift in pH, delta pH is 0 0.1. So 4.92 is the pH of the buffered solution into which we added sodium hydroxide. There was a very small increase in pH which is of the magnitude of 0 0.1. The pH of the solution that we calculated earlier was 4.83. It's not written on the slide over here, but the difference would give you a change in pH of 0 0.01. That's how you calculate delta pH or shift in pH, or you can illustrate the effectiveness of a buffer by using these calculations. That's it for now. If you like the video, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.